Hey folks, hope you're well. I swear every time I turn the light on and hit record, the whole street starts to make noises. I'm surprised there's not a marching band outside at the moment. I, I sat down, I sat up, and suddenly the birds outside were going, hoo, 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 hoo. and they're not owls, they're wood pigeons, I guess, and tweeting, and people are running up and down, and Ollie and Ben are playing downstairs, and I'm really acutely aware of all of this noise just happening, and so if I look a bit off, it's because of that. <laughs> but I know it doesn't come through, weirdly. I listen back at the end and I'm like, I spoke about that for five minutes and no one heard a thing. So if you see me reacting, that's all it is. It seems to have just gone excessively wild outside. Um, I feel like I always start my vlogs this way at the moment, but I am knackered again today and it is ridiculous now. I don't know what to do. Um, ben has developed this habit of just leaping over his bedroom gate, coming into our room and just laying between Claire and I, because we've got quite a, a long, wide bed. And so you, he could fit in there without bothering us. Sometimes he'll sleep in and I won't even notice he's here. Claire will know or whatever, and he'll just, you know, I'll get up in the morning, I'm like, oh, crikey. But last night was just stupid. He was just going between the two of us. He'd lay on my pillow and keep me awake, kicking me in the back, and then he'd move on to Claire's pillow. I think we were just flipping him back and forth. And all I kept thinking for, well, it must have been a good four or five hours was, I really should just get up and put him in his own room. I really should just get up. And I kept falling back asleep. And I couldn't relax and sleep because I was having this really absurd... I'm not going to get into like a long-winded dream here, but I dreamt that... I had been sending £500 to, I'm guessing it was NASA, every month when I had spare money. I don't ever have spare money, but in this dream I did. Because they were selling me these weird torpedoes they were firing at Mars to try and terraform Mars. And everyone I paid for meant I got a little bit of Mars land to have for my family. It was absolutely absurd. But the worst bit of this was that... In the dream, I'd never, I hadn't been doing it. I'd paid my most recent one, and then someone had said to me, "You realise that's not real?" And I'm like, "Of course it's real. I see the torpedoes go off and everything." And they were like, "No, they're just tricking you. That's just some bloke in his shed, just making money out of you." And so for the rest of the night, my whole dream was just, I'd be waking up, moving Ben around, going back to sleep, and thinking, "You idiot, sheepdog! You idiot! You've been paying some nutter five hundred quid a month for nothing. You thought you were getting Martian land. You're getting nothing." And it, and I woke up in the morning and I just thought none of that made any sense i was an idiot either way <laughs> like why would i want mars land i don't understand but i i just felt stressed i felt really stressed out that claire was going to find out i'd been buying well that i hadn't been buying martian land that she'd be annoyed that i was even in the first place that i just didn't want people thinking little of me and then equally i woke up stressed because ben had been kicking me all night so I've spent the whole day as just this bundle of like tightened knots. My back has been killing me and everything just because I just, I just, I was ashamed of myself and I was infuriated with Ben. And Ben's not had any side effects of staying up all night. He honestly didn't sleep for a second. I'm pretty sure. I'm guessing just being at home has given him unlimited energy, much to our hell. Um, people have been debating in the nursery chat thing that. Like there's a Facebook group or something clever telling me that they've said, oh, we're opening on the first. And most of the parents have gone, well, we're not sending our kid in. Claire and I, like I said last last vlog, we're just going to fire him there if we have to. He'll run there. He'll probably just climb over their gate and go in and start kicking the place down. He's, he's desperate to go back. We're slightly nervous that they're going to think that spending seven weeks with us has turned him into a monster. I know they'll just wear him out. We, we, we give him plenty. Like I said before, we give him plenty to do. There's so much stuff for him to play with. We play with him. We read to him. We you know, watch films of him. We take him on the, on the trampoline outside, on the swing going for walks you know but he's just never ending and we are just worried now they're going to think you've you've basically turned what was a very sweet little kid into this raging never-ending monster who just doesn't stop if he doesn't sleep tonight i'm gonna cry the vlog when you see me on monday i'll have absolutely no hair and i'll just be all red-eyed and puffy and like drinking coffee between words and whatnot but Oh, it's just absurd. I don't I don't understand where he gets it from. And I hate having dreams that stress me out because sleep's supposed to be relaxing. But I seem to every now and again, I just have a dream where I'm so shocked or annoyed with myself that I wake up just thinking, you fool. And that was one of them. So it's really put me out of sorts today. Uh, I think everyone else has been pretty much all right. I don't know how Claire does it. Claire survives no sleep really well. She just got on with it. She's just had meetings and stuff at work. I had a few meetings. I spent the day trying to make an 
I suppose to make a presentation for some colleagues so they can show it to customers about what we sell. And it's supposed to just be a few slides. I've turned it into like 30 slides with buttons that you press on one of the pages and it takes you to the page you want. And then if you press another button, it goes back. So it's actually, in theory, it could be a two page presentation or it could be a 50 page presentation. It's up to the person using it. And my colleague who I showed it to was like, that is really cool. And I'm like, yeah, but I'm worried now that when I show it to the people who ask for it, they're going to go, what have you done? Why have you done that? You fool. Um, I'm I'm not very confident. I, uh, ironically, I wasn't even going to talk about this, but ironically, I'm supposed to be going to a confidence webinar this afternoon. Um, I say going to, watching from my sofa. I'd booked it. I'd got an invite on LinkedIn uh, by some random promotional, motivational person or other. And I just thought that's something I should start doing, looking at them, watching them, reading them. Because when I used to do that, Back in my days, very early podcast era, very early doing stuff online. I used to be really into reading like Tim Ferriss, watching videos, uh, Tony, what's his name? American guy. I can't remember his surname now. Just basically all the motivational speakers and people like that. I read a book called Eat That Frog because my boss was obsessed with it. My kids think I'm mental when I tell them to eat frogs. So it just means do the worst thing first thing in the morning every day. And so I just thought, yeah, I got this random invitation. Did I want to attend it? And I thought, yeah, I'll, I'll attend it and watch it. But then like 20 minutes before it was due to start, Claire was starting to crumble actually from being worn out and she's pulling her hair out a bit and she was like, I've still got to go to the shops and buy shopping. So I said, oh, I'll do it. So I ended up missing my, my little webinar. But um, yeah, I went to Tesco's and people are just a, just a nightmare. Um, I saw someone wearing a face mask and cursed my sister. She's never ever going to live this down. It's not even her fault. But the week that COVID started being a thing, I think I talked about this at the time, the week it started to become a thing in China, the week it started to become news, I went on Amazon and was like, oh, I could buy 60 face masks for a tenner. And I'd text her messing around and she said, nah, that's just weird. And then a week later, she was like, did you buy them? It's probably a good idea to get some. And I looked and it was like 60 quid for 10. It like flipped. And um, <clears throat> so I didn't buy them. And I could have, I mean, I wouldn't have bought them then. They weren't that good. But I'm there now in Tesco's and everyone's wearing a face mask except me. I was just like, oh no, like literally everyone in the queue around me was wearing them. And it's not legal yet, is it? It's not the, It's not like a requirement. Perhaps it should be. Claire's been told she's got to wear face masks to any visits she does now, which feels like they're gearing up for her to return to doing visits all the time rather than being at home and working from home and the nice kind of thing we've had at the moment where she's not had to go deal with really big things all the time which I mean is a little bit worrying because it means they're still happening and no one's there but she's now got to get face masks for that but I got into the shop and no one was distancing it was absolutely mental this woman in front of me kept looking back at me as if to say go away and I was like well I'm like three meters away from you so you can get lost keep looking back at me but at this point I had 15 minutes until my webinar so I was thinking I might make it round but she was so slow I hadn't even left a veg aisle by the time like my 15 minutes were up she was ridiculous she would not let me pass just blocking everything and I thought I could easily go two meters round her but then once I got past her finally somewhere by the bloody uh, potatoes or something uh, every other person was just standing next to me or walking up right behind me I was standing there looking I was trying to find Tesco's Rice Krispies because my blood's not rich enough for the proper Kellogg's ones and someone just stood there next to me while I'm like looking at the aisle and I I just started shaking my head and I thought, I don't know where to go. If I walk that way, I'm near that person. If I walk that way, I'm near that person. No one was taking it seriously. I ended up getting the Kellogg's ones um, because the box seemed massive. I thought I could justify it. The box is bigger. It'll be all right. So I'm hoping that big cereal hasn't just conned me there. But um, yeah, I went, went up and down everything, got everything we needed to get. And then it was just like, even in the queue to the till, it was just too close. I was trying to give the woman behind the till loads of space, but she'd like pull me corn escalops through and just put them down and I'm like right now I've got to lean right in like to, she's there and I'm leaning in it a bloody get I'm going can you push them down the, the slope to me and she's like what and I said well can you push them down and she just sort of looked at me like I was mad I didn't say it I was like can you pass me them and she looked a bit like can you ask me to pass you pick them up you tosser so um I explained to her and said like I'm trying to not invade your space but then she was chucking stuff out so quick that I ended up just getting really like my back is killing me now. Like it was killing me anyway because of the night's sleep. I really because she was so rude. I didn't want to make small talk, but in my head I was like, if this had been a nice person, I'd have been saying to her, "My 
toddlers crippled me but I just looked really ridiculous I looked like I was being odd to make her pass me stuff I was really really struggling to do it at a normal speed considering my age and everything but I was in so much pain so I kind of just she said club card all of that I paid and I just hobbled off silently to the car by that point I was like 25 minutes late for the bloody webinar so I missed it um, I realized when I got back that Claire only sent me out to get a few bits and I got basically a week and a bit's worth of food. I kind of went nuts. I think I just think get everything the big way. Like, you know, if we want a bag of pasta, get the biggest bag of pasta because then we'll eat it for two weeks or whatever. Whereas she gets like a week's worth of pasta. Like I'm not buying 10 of them. I'm just getting the big one because there's five of us and we eat a lot of it. But I come back and I'm always like, yep, here's all the lemonade. Here's all the Dr. Pepper. Here's all the... And she's like, what are you doing? Uh, perhaps I shouldn't do it. Perhaps I should let her do it. She's the one who's budgeting it all out and everything. But yeah, the kids were happy. I'm quite happy. It means I've got Dr. Pepper and stuff to drink. Um, although that's nearly gone already. It's only been, what What time is it now? I'm not even gonna bother. It's been like an hour and a half and it's pretty much already gone, which means I should have bought like 50 bottles because one bottle was not enough. I mean, 50 would have been too many too. Um, I, I, I'm delighted it's nearly the weekend and I keep realizing that that means nothing now. It literally means I don't have to start my laptop up in the morning and sit there tapping away on a spreadsheet or a PowerPoint or whatever it is I'm working on. Next week it's website design stuff all week. Um, I'm desperately living for the fact that I'm meant to be in Cornwall the Monday after, but I'm obviously not going to be. That's cancelled. We've done that now. We're waiting for whole seasons to move our holiday across. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it on the vlog, but they announced that you could get a price match on your holiday. They said everyone booked from the 28th of March to the 22nd of May is covered. I think it was 22nd is covered on this deal where they will price match your holiday one year in the future. You can do the same place, same like week long holiday and everything. They'll price match it. Our holiday starts the 23rd, the day after the deal. So we were just mortified at that. But I got in touch with them. They wouldn't talk to me. It was really irritating. I said, like, I only want to know the answer so I can then dispatch Claire onto you if if need be. But oh, we can't talk to the person. So I had to pretend to be Claire. Only on text, not verbally. I wasn't like, hello. Um, but I filled out all their stuff and they've said, yeah, we can now try and get our holiday sorted for next year in the same place at the same time using the same whatever we haven't lost anything but i sort of resented the idea of paying them an extra 200 quid for the holiday that would have cost us this much this year um i get they need to make ends meet and everything but it just seems cheeky so yeah they are going to honor it which is great but i'm just living for that week of just Ben could kick me all he wants if I don't have to get up in the morning. It'll be, what, nine days in a row of just nothingness. Uh, I think I think one of those days is a bank holiday, so everyone would have got that anyway. But, uh, yeah, I just can't wait. The, the, the week ahead is going to go so slow, I don't know what to do to make it speed up, except maybe try and get more sleep because today is dragged. But all I plan on doing, if I can really, really think of ahead that far, um, I'm thinking I might try and have a dabble at doing some... Uh, some live gaming stuff because i think that'd be fun so if you want to watch that let me know and every time i mention ftl i no one no one said yeah that sounds good everyone's just been silent so i'm wondering whether that's a bad idea um i may still pursue it for the first day at least uh other than that i'm hoping we, we need to get a shed can't find anywhere that will sell a shed that will dispatch for that week because that's the only time i'll have to actually put it up really um, I, I kind of wanted to buy it and have it just put up because me building it would be a nightmare. Um, we were on the Wayfair app, but that says like eight weeks turnaround for delivery, which is a bit excessive. Um, so I don't know what to do with that. Nowhere seems to sell smooth. I want one that's just like you could run your finger down it and not get a splinter. Whereas every shed in the world seems to be if you touch it, you're going to end up with just you're going to look like Pinhead from that film. I forget what it's called. Uh, just all these pieces of wood sticking out of my hand. Um, it's just, it's just. I don't understand why anyone wants a horrible shed you can't caress. And if you have, a, if you if you spend all that time building it, you want to like rub your hand down it and go look at the state of this. But apparently not. Um, I I just won't go near it. If it's got rough wood on it, I'll never. I'll I'll bring all the stuff into it, and that'll be the last I touch it. I won't go near it again, and it'll be Claire's domain. And I don't want that. I want one that I can be like woohoo and jump into and drag stuff out of. And I'm kind of thinking that when it's there. 
if I can get away with it, I might record in it for a bit or something like that. I don't know. I kind of, a bit of me is worried that everyone will hear me talking in the garden and that'll be weird and my neighbours will be thinking I'm mental. But equally, it'll just be a good place to do it until the garage is empty. But I mean, that's probably only a day's work either way. So maybe I'll just do it in the garage. Um, speaking of my neighbours, I'm a little bit worried. I mean, those are open, so I've got to talk a bit quieter. But um, Claire overheard them talking about their work they're having done in their garden. And they're having a bar put in and a, and a jacuzzi and all sorts. And I'm just like, oh, great. So you're going to be having round the clock parties that they were saying they want their garden to have a cover over the top of it so that they can use it all year round. And I thought <sighs> that means that I've got to put up with pop music for literally the rest of time in that garden all the time, no matter what. And they, I mean, they have people over quite often and they're really polite and not noisy at all. But I just lately the music's been loud and I'm thinking that's just killed me a bit. Uh, I genuinely sat there and thought, do we just sell now before they're finished? Do we just put the house on the market and run? But no, they're nice people. They won't take the mickey, but I'm just slightly nervous imagining them. Like, I think Claire meant somewhere for them to sit and have a drink. I imagined it being like a full long bar. He's going to stand behind it and serve drinks. So I was kind of, yeah, worried about that. But I think my my imagination ran wild. But I don't want to end up, I don't want to end up, not liking them because it's noisy or something you know i don't want to end up at, at war and i'm sure we won't but i just get nervous i start thinking it's going to get bad but um they might think the same if i start vlogging from the garage and stuff like that i don't know how noisy that'll be i don't really you know they probably have to put with our kids being noisy who knows but anyway everything else is good i'm worrying about nothing um I'm sure other, other, like, if it was if it was mad out there, the other neighbours would go nuts too. Or we'd all make friends. With, Claire said to me, well, I joked to her. I was like, you could, we could just make friends with them and go around there for a drink. Because she was like, I think that ship sailed. <laughs> I think we've probably ruined it enough by now that that's not going to happen. But um, yeah, never mind. So yeah, that's your lot. I hope this has not been too much of a ramble. I genuinely don't know what I've been saying for the past 17 minutes because I'm exhausted. Um, I've got some programmes to watch tonight and I'm hoping I can stay awake through them because again, that's all that's getting me through every day at the moment, knowing I'll watch a few episodes of Community before I just collapse into a heap of sleep. So I'm going to go do that. And then if Ben wakes me up tonight, he's, I'm just, I might just build a dog kennel in the garden. He can live in this garage when we get it. Um, not garage, shed, because he's just a nightmare. I might actually train him to go in Emily's room and bother her because she could just she could just sit with him. She's got nothing to do tomorrow. It's fine. But yeah, hope you're all well. Let me know in the comments how you're getting on. If you haven't subscribed, hit subscribe. I'm trying to grow this channel and it's actually gone back too since I started saying that. I feel like every time I tell people to subscribe, it goes backwards, which is insane. You're cruel. <laughs> not you, them. Those people are cruel. But yeah, if you haven't subscribed, hit it because that's useful. Um... YouTube's algorithms and all of that boost it and that kind of thing makes my ego feel good uh, everything else is cool let me know you're getting on and I'll chat to you oh, it'll be Monday because I don't think well I might do something over the weekend I was considering doing something with the kids but realistically I'll probably wake up at two o'clock on Saturday and then that'll be the weekend gone so yeah see you on Monday have a good weekend cheers